Hey, P Calculus. Section 3.4, lesson one. What's the derivative of sine? Great question. Well, we know this. The derivative of any function is equal to the slope of its tangent line, which equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Right? OK. So in place of the x, we're going to put x plus h. So it's sine of x plus h minus sine of x. You can't see that. My apologies. We're not playing that game. Here we go. Back up, back up. Divide that by h. All right, now, this is where we kind of are stuck, so it seems. Hopefully you guys remember that sine of x plus h, oh, come on now, <laughs> sine of x plus h does not equal, it, it doesn't have a distributive property for sine. This, this is not true. All right, you saw it last year when we did trig proof, and I think we did it a little bit again this year. If you have two things added together inside of a sine, then you use the sum formula for sine. It went like this. Sine of x plus h equals the sine of x times the cosine of h plus, same sign, the cosine of x times the sine of h. All right. That's what we're going to do down here. So I'm going to take this rule right here and implant it into this limit. So you got the limit as x approaches 0 of all that stuff up there, sine of x times cosine of h plus cosine of x sine of h. All right. And then we can subtract sine of x. We still have that subtraction on the tail end. All that divided by h. So what the heck are we supposed to do? Well, this is where you got to be a little bit clever about how you continue through this proof. All right. The first thing that I notice is that we've been doing, remember we've been doing product rule, quotient rule, and then algebra first. Now, usually you don't try to split something like this up, but the lost limits will lead us in a different direction. Now, Primarily because of COVID and the, the way in which I'm teaching this year, which is way new, and we didn't really get through all the limits we wanted to last year, I skipped over trig limits, in which these two fundamental trig properties um, are kind of the basis for doing trig limits, where the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x divided by x, it just equals 1. All right, I think they gave a proof in the book somewhere. Uh, a corollary to that proof, something that just kind of tags along to it, is that the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine of h divided by h, that equals 0. So I guess what I'm saying is, you notice that we've got cosines and sines divided by h here. If we split up each part of that limit, each part of that derivative, we're probably going to be able to utilize these. All right, so let's do that. Now, actually, here's something interesting. We can regroup these terms before we divide them all by h. Here's what I'm thinking. There's a sine of x here, and there's a sine of x over there. Potentially, factoring could do something for us. So what I'm going to do is group those together. Done. 
divide that by h. Then I'm going to have the cosine of x times sine of h. Divide that by h. So I might have skipped a little bit of algebra there, but bottom line is it's rock solid to, to do that move just using algebra. No calculus there. So now I can factor out a sine of x. So this is the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of x times cosine of h minus 1 over h. It's almost identical to this. We can make it identical. Take out a negative. Now we can apply the theorem to that right there. But maybe I'm jumping ahead of myself. Maybe I should look over here before we do that. So I'm going to distribute the, you can distribute the limit through addition. So this is plus the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of x times sine of x. Oh, we got another one. Sine of h over h when the limit approaches 0. Sine of h over h when the limit approaches 0. It equals 1. Ugh. OK, we're getting somewhere now. All right, don't get too excited here. Do we have enough room over here? Of course we have room. We have a whole whiteboard. So that right there, it's going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of negative sine of x times the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine of h over h. So this part right here is going to be, there's no h to plug in for, so this is just negative sine of x times 0. All right, so you, you completely zeroed out this part right here. Bye. You're gone. The other one? It doesn't disappear everything. It doesn't erase it. Cosine of x here times 1. At least that's what it was for the lost limit. Whoa, what, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so. So the derivative of sine. Is cosine. So what's the derivative of cosine? Oh, you mean we got to go through the definition again? Yes. But we have our bearings now. It's kind of like we know what we're looking for. All right, raise your hand if you think the derivative of cosine is sine. Let's see if you're right. So we're going to do the exact same thing. The function is cosine of x. What is its derivative? We're not quite sure yet. We think it might just be sine, but we're going to do the noble thing and prove it. So it's going to be cosine of x plus h minus cosine of x over h. Now there was a different sum formula for cosine. If you check back to your trig sheet, cosine was always cos cos opposite sine sine. So what I mean by that is you can take the cosine twice of both parts like that. You do opposite the minus. No, I'm sorry. I, I messed that up. We're looking at this right here. Opposite the plus is minus and then sine sine. 
sine of x, sine of h. And then subtract the cosine of x all over h. Here, let's just make sure we got enough room for the whole thing. There we go. So now, remember the way in which I regroup the terms? I said, let's get the cosines together. Well, I think it was sines the last time, but now we have more cosines than sines. So bring these two together. You can put both of those over h, and then these are left with h. So now we know, we know the drill, right? You're not going to factor out a cosine. You're going to factor out a negative cosine so that it matches. Wait, how do I do this? That one right there. So it's the limit as h approaches 0 of the negative cosine you just factored out. What's left over? 1 minus cosine of h over h. Then over here, you've got minus. We're going we're gonna to take the limit and punch it through. The limit as h approaches sine of x times the limit as h approaches sine of, sorry, the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of h over h. Sorry, sometimes I'm just saying the wrong thing, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> OK. So this is negative cosine of x. This is 0. So anything times 0 zeroes it out. We, we could see that coming. And then it's 0 minus the sine of x times 1. Oh, OK. So the derivative. The derivative of sine is cosine, but the derivative of cosine is negative sine. That won't get confusing. <laughs> no, it's just something you just kind of like, you, you got to manage it in your brain. So, so here's the deal. I could prove all six trig functions just using those two because you can rewrite the other four trig functions in terms of sine and cosine. I'm not going to prove them all right now. I'm just going to map them out so that at the end, by the end of this video, we know all the basic derivatives for trigonometry functions. So let's make a little chart. And the lost limits are lost once again. They might make a cameo here or there. So here's our chart. Original function f of x. Derivative. The derivative of sine of x, cosine of x. The derivative of cosine of x, negative sine of x. The derivative of tangent, that ends up being secant squared of x, secant of x times secant of x. So now let's recycle. Who's reciprocal to, to sine of x? Cosecant. The derivative of cosecant of x is negative cotangent squared of x. So it's like the negative of cotangent times cotangent. Secant of x, wait a second. I 
I, that's wrong. I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> it's actually, the, the derivative of cosecant of x is negative cosecant of x cotangent of x. Secant of x, it's derivative if secant, secant of x, it's derivative if secant x tangent x. And then cotangent, that's the one I was thinking of. It's negative cosecant squared of x. All right, I'm going to double check just because I'm not trusting my brain right now. Looks good. All right, that seems like a good stopping place. You're going to have to commit these to memory in the coming days and weeks and months ahead. So I just, you know, bite the bullet and do it as quickly as you can. There's no need, you know, leaving it to chance later on. All right, thanks for watching. New video where we do some practice problems are coming up soon.